welcome back to another video. I hope that everybody is doing well today. It is later in the evening and all is quiet at the house, fingers crossed. So I thought I would take an opportunity to go ahead and record my video for this week for my Think Thursday. So for today, we're gonna to be talking about thyroid disease, both hypo and hyperthyroidism. But before we get into it, I did wanna just briefly mention, if you don't know, I did my first three-day review for the Family Nurse Practitioner's Licensing Exam uh, this past weekend. It's like 12 hours of lecture, just shy of 12 hours of lecture. It went really, really well. Almost 150 people signed up. I really got to engage with a lot of students and I think it was really successful. So if you missed it and it's something that you're interested in, if you're studying for your boards, definitely check it out. I'll have everything in the description box below, but that's all I'm gonna say about that. So if you don't know already, many of you might actually know, but I'm sure plenty, plenty of you don't know as well. Um, I did have thyroid cancer myself. And so this topic, I know a lot about it um, also personally. And so when I was, I'll just briefly tell you like my experience with it. And then we'll just go in and talk about like the literature and the research and best practice. So when I was 17 years old, I had a large um, lump that I just happened to notice on my neck. And I went to my primary care and initially they thought it was benign. I did an ultrasound and then I had to have a biopsy of it and the tissue did come back that it was malignant. What they wanted to do initially was they wanted to try and preserve some of my thyroid gland and so they removed half of it. Um, I had to do like radioactive iodine and I had to have radiation treatment and they did like a partial thyroidectomy. And so the goal was to try and keep part of the thyroid, but I guess they sent tissue out for pathology and determined that it wasn't going to be the safest to keep the remaining part of my thyroid. And so I actually had to go back in and have the second half of my thyroid removed. And I had to do like the radioactive iodine and radiation and all that fun stuff again. If you've ever had radioactive iodine, it's a very funny experience. If you have and you're watching this, tell me in the comments below because I'd like to hear what other people went through if it was similar to my experience. And you know, I was 17 years old. So this was almost 20 years ago. Now I'm about to be 34. Um, and so I try to like remember as clear as possible, but I had like teenage angst going on at that time in my life. And I don't know, like now I would remember all of the details, but at that time, for whatever reason, I didn't pay that closely attention. And I'm trying to remember, but like when I got the radioactive iodine, you know, they put like a tin can inside of a tin can inside of like a tin can and like stuck a straw in it. And they put the radioactive iodine in there and people were like the nurse was wearing like some sort of PPE and gave me the radioactive iodine and left the room before I was able to drink it. And then I had to like quarantine for a couple of days. Like I couldn't use the same restroom as other people. I had to carry a card around that said that I could like set off like sensors um, for a little bit. So that was my experience. If it's something you're interested in like hearing more about, cause obviously I just gave you like some word vomit of my experience. If it's something that you're like actually interested in hearing like a whole story about, then go ahead and just leave it in the comments below and I can make a video about it. But let's, today is educational. Today is supposed to be educational. You know, I can sit here and talk your ear off, but I'm gonna try not to. So let's go into thyroid disease. Like I said, we'll do hypothyroidism and then we'll do hyperthyroidism or maybe vice versa. We'll see how I do it. But one of the two, we're gonna cover them both and then that will be it for today's video. So let's dive into the material first. All right, so let's talk about thyroid disease. So let's talk labs first. There's the TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone, and then there's the active thyroid hormones, both T3 and T4. So I went ahead and provided those normal labs for you there. You can go ahead and take a look through those. Um, I'm not gonna read through them, but definitely uh, review those and get familiar with the normal labs. So the best screening test for both hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism is going to be the TSH, or that thyroid stimulating hormone. So whenever a patient is being screened for thyroid disease, your first step is going to be to order a TSH, and then the results of that test will help to guide you into your next steps. So if the TSH is normal, no further, te no further testing is warranted. Um, unless the patient is experiencing symptoms of thyroid disease, then a T4 may be helpful for you. So if the TSH is high, you should go ahead and add a, T, a free T4, and that's to help to 
uh, determine the degree of hypothyroidism. And then if the TSH is low, then you go ahead and add on a free T4 and T3, and that's to determine the degree of hyperthyroidism. All right, so there are two big problems with thyroid disease. So there's hypothyroidism, and then there's hyperthyroidism. So first we're going to discuss hyperthyroidism. So the classic lab findings of a patient with hyperthyroidism include a decreased TSH with an elevated T4 and elevated T3. Because remember, that stimulating hormone, it doesn't have to work as hard or even at all because there is already so much of that circulating active thyroid hormone. So patients with hyperthyroidism, they often present with symptoms of tremor, palpitations, anxiety, increased heart rate, weight loss, heat intolerance. So with hyper, I want you to think everything is heightened. So the most common cause of hyperthyroidism is Graves' disease. In fact, up to 80% of patients with hyperthyroidism have Graves' disease, making it the most common cause for hyperthyroidism. So the way that I remember this was thinking of the quote, rushing to the grave, hyper Graves' disease, rushing to the grave. So that helped me remember it. So Graves' disease is an autoimmune disease, and it causes an increase in production and function of both the T3 and T4. The classic patient with Graves' disease, they present with ophthalmopathy, so there's eye involvement. Um, so we can see upper eyelid retraction, lid lag, swelling, conjunctivitis, and then bulging eyes. Also an enlarged uh, non-nodular thyroid, and moderate to severe hyperthyroidism on their lab work. So if all of this is present with your patient, then you can pretty confidently go ahead and make a diagnosis of Graves' disease. However, confirmation of Graves' disease, it's done with antibody testing, um, and those are called thyrotropin receptor antibodies and then the thyroid perioxidase antibodies. So hyperthyroidism can affect many different organ systems, including the skin, eyes, the cardiovascular system, metabolic system, respiratory, and GI. It really does affect so many different aspects of someone's life. I can really attest to this. Uh, my thyroid is definitely, it fluctuates a lot. And so when I'm very hyperthyroid, um, I can really feel very anxious and I can have an elevated heart rate and I can see um, symptoms of hypo. So it definitely manifests in a lot of ways. I did want to briefly highlight how hyperthyroidism can affect the cardiovascular system because this is going to be important to be aware of. So with hyperthyroidism comes an increase in cardiac output. So atrial fibrillation, this can actually occur in 10 to 20% of patients with hyperthyroidism. Often this arrhythmia, it actually will self-correct uh, self once uh, the thyroid is corrected. Um, some do go on to actually require like cardioversion, but it's just something to be aware of. If a patient presents with new onset AFib, you should really um, you know, look into their levels of their, their thyroid levels. So how do we treat hyperthyroidism? So there's gonna be three main treatment options. There's antithyroid medications. Those are called thionamides. Uh, there's gonna be the radioactive iodine, and then there's surgery. So it's important to note that radioactive iodine, it is contraindicated in both pregnancy and lactation, so just good to know. Uh, for patients with significant symptoms or those who are going to be at an increased risk of complications from hyperthyroidism, so it's recommended to just go ahead and begin them on the thionamides immediately. Um, also, oftentimes they'll be put on an additional beta blocker as well, and that's to help kind of control that heart rate. And then they'll follow that with radioiodine and surgery. Obviously, these patients are going to be managed by endocrinology, but it's just good to be familiar. As always, um, I think it's really important to point out red flags and emergencies. So for hyperthyroidism, 
there's a thyroid storm. So this is a rare but very life-threatening condition and it can occur from untreated hyperthyroidism. Uh, it could be a result from thyroid surgery, trauma, or infection. This should be really kind of easy to stick in your mind for, you know, think of a storm. It's high energy, a lot of high forces. That's hyperthyroidism, so thyroid storm. So classic symptoms of a thyroid storm include tachycardia, high fevers, uh, GI symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, uh, dysfunction of the central nervous system. So you can actually see uh, behavioral symptoms like agitation, psychosis. Uh, so everything becomes severely heightened with uh, this thyroid storm. Diagnosis is made with the symptoms that we just kind of talked about and then evidence on, you know, are their lab work again, so that low TSH and elevated T4 or T3. Like I said, this is a life-threatening emergency, so these patients, if you suspect this at all, are referred to the ER department. All right, so let's move on to hypothyroidism now. So Hajimoto's, this is the most common cause of primary hypothyroidism. That's in settings where iodine deficiency isn't of a concern. So like I, um, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but we need iodine to produce thyroid hormone hormone. However, our bodies don't naturally make iodine, and so we have to actually ingest that in our diet. So here in the U.S., this isn't of concern. Our food, a lot of it is fortified with iodine. However, there are areas where this is not the case. So for example, Western Pacific, Southeast Asia, Africa, um, iodine deficiency is it's a real problem in those areas, and so that is a leading cause of hypothyroidism. Here, though, it would be the Hajimoto's. So Hajimoto's, this is another autoimmune disease. It's the most common common cause of hypothyroidism. So this means that the individual's immune system, it's attacking an otherwise healthy thyroid. Um, although this autoimmune disease can actually affect anyone, it is definitely more common in middle-aged women. So symptoms of hypo hypothyroidism, they can vary greatly, but there is like a classic textbook presentation, and that's a person with, of course, those low thyroid levels, but also symptoms of fatigue, bradycardia, cold intolerance, weight gain, constipation, irregular menstrual cycles. So with hypothyroidism, I want you to think hypo goes slow Hajimoto. I know it's kind of silly and odd, but it all rhymes and it will stick in your brain that hypothyroidism, everything kind of slows down. They get that bradycardia, they're tired, they're cold, weight gain, constipated, and Hajimoto's is the number one cause. So think hypo goes slow, Hajimoto. So we can also see a goiter with these patients, um, particularly, again, if that they have the iodine deficiency or if they have Hajimoto. So obviously, that's going to be a large demographic. It's confirmed, Hajimoto's is confirmed with thyroid perioxidase antibodies. Um, they're almost always elevated in those patients with Hajimoto's. Uh, in addition, you know, of course, we want to do a thyroid ultrasound, especially if there's any kind of uh, nodule or asymmetry to the thyroid, any p uh, pain with palpation, all of those would be indications to go ahead and get an ultrasound of it. Um, but a confirmed diagnosis of hypothyroidism, of course, is going to be made based on those patients' lab work. So remember, if the circulating hormone, T4 and T3, if they're low, then we're going to see an elevated thyroid stimulating hormone because it's working overtime, because it's working to bring up more of those hormones. So if a person's initial TSH comes back elevated, then we want to go ahead and repeat that. And in addition, we'll add on that T4, and that's because we're trying to confirm if they have a diagnosis of hypothyroidism. So all patients with hypothyroid, regardless of symptoms, they need to be go. They need to be treated. Um, so it's really straightforward. There's the synthetic T4, that's levothyroxine. Um, of course, the goal of treatment is going to be to normalize the patient's TSH. Um, and in initial dosing, it can be started at the intended full dose for most patients, but there is an important um, caveat here is that for patients who have established uh, cardiac disease or if they're above 60 years of age, then we actually want to start them on the levothyroxine at a lower dose. So the literature recommends like 25 to 50 mics a day, and then you'll go ahead and have their TSH uh, re-measured again in four to six weeks to see how it's trending. Um, the idea is that because if you give them the thyroid hormone, we saw how much um, activity this can have on the cardi cardiovascular care system. And so we want to be really careful with these at-risk populations. Um, and then two, it's just an important point to go ahead and educate your patient that they should be taking those thyroid meds on an empty stomach. Uh, 
ideally 30 to 60 minutes before breakfast. And so just like with hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, that has an emergency too. And that is referred um, to myxedema coma. So myxedema coma, this occurs from that severe hypothyroidism, and it can actually cause a decrease in function of a variety of organs. So that, again, that classic textbook presentation are patients with a decreased uh, level of consciousness, hypothermia, hypotension, bradycardia, hypoventilation, and hypoglycemia. So you can see the trend here. Everything is going very, very low, very, very, very slow. Um, and so they have a very high mortality rate. They need to be managed very closely in the hospital. Treatment with them is very aggressive. So it involves like com uh, combined T4, T3 therapy. They're very sick, uh, require lots of supportive measures, like potentially um, intubation, lots and lots and lots of um, close watching. And then, um, like I said, uh, with, with all of thyroid disease, we really want to be managing these patients too with endocrinology. We'll be co-managing them with that specialty. Unless, of course, you work in endocrine. That might be your thing. All right, so hopefully you learned a little bit of something there. I know thyroid disease can be a little bit of like a dry topic, but it's definitely very important. I mean, so many people do have a thyroid disease, and so you'll see a ton in practice. If you're a student or if you're going to be taking your boards, you're going to see it on your boards. It's just a very common uh, chronic disease that we see in practice. So definitely something to be familiar with. Hopefully, like I said, you feel good about it now. Hopefully it was helpful for you. Let me know in the comments below if there's something that you would like to see me discuss in the future for one of these Think Thursday uh, videos. But yeah, so I think that's going to be all for today's video. Don't forget to learn something new every day. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Seriously, you guys, it means so much to me and it helps me continuing to make this content. I love what I do and I love the community. So thank you so much for supporting me. And until next time, I wish you nothing but the best and we'll talk soon. Okay, bye. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day.